The college football regular season came to a close yesterday, but for five American teams, the season isn't over yet. Three teams claimed a share of the conference crown, Memphis, UCF, and Cincinnati finishing up the season at 7-1 in league play. Houston and East Carolina finished next in the American at 5-3 and, and will also have one more game to look forward to. Memphis will kick off the Americans Bowl season December 22nd when they head to the Miami Beach Bowl to take on BYU. For the Tigers, it has been a remarkable season to say the least. Last year, Justin Fuente's team was 3-9, but this year they flipped the script. Their motto heading into this fall was wait till this year, and this in fact was the year that change was coming. Memphis hadn't been to a bowl game since 2008 and hadn't won a conference championship since 1971. There weren't too many eyes on this team back in August when they were picked 7th in the American preseason poll, but had slowly started to turn early on when the Tigers played impressive football against a tough non-conference schedule. First, it was out at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. The Tigers and the Bruins were tied up in the fourth quarter, and Memphis lost by a touchdown against the 11th ranked team in the country. Then they hit the road to play number 10, Ole Miss, in Oxford. The Tigers were down by four points heading into the fourth quarter before the Rebels pulled away. Those losses might have set Memphis up for a season to remember. The Tigers came out of the gates with a huge win on the road against fellow co-champion Cincinnati in their first league game, putting up 41 points against the Bearcats. Then came the only conference loss of the season at home to Houston. Since then, it's been all W's, the Tigers riding a six-game winning streak into Miami. American fans are familiar with BYU. The Cougars defeated Houston and UConn and lost to UCF during the regular season. BYU rose to as high as number 18 in the country before losing star quarterback Taysom Hill to a broken leg. A four-game losing streak followed, but the Cougars rallied to win their final four games, finishing at 8-4. UCF, the back-to-back -back conference champs, will get to stay in their home state, Florida, for the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl on December 26th. The Knights kicked off their season a little differently than everyone else. They headed across the Atlantic to Dublin, Ireland for a big matchup against Penn State in the Croke Park Classic. George O'Leary's team lost a heartbreaker on a last-second field goal by the Nittany Lions, but found their quarterback. Justin Holman made his first appearance in a Knights uniform coming into that game off the bench. Big shoes to fill with the loss of Blake Bortles, but Holman became the go-to guy throughout the course of the season. Tough 0-2 start for UCF, but they quickly got back on track and continued to improve throughout the fall. Coach O'Leary said that the BYU game would be a defining moment of their season, and they were able to pull out a win in that one in front of a primetime TV audience in October. The Knights would continue their surge, winning nine of their last ten games. UCF continued its impressive play in conference and are now 15-1 in their first two seasons in the American. Last year was a storybook season with a big win in the Fiesta Bowl, but this year's story had a sweet ending as well. On the road at East Carolina, in desperate search of a win in order to take that championship trophy back to Orlando. The Knights gave up their big halftime lead, falling behind by four points with 16 seconds left on the clock. One play sets up one of the most exciting finishes we have seen all season. Justin Holman heaves it up in the air, hoping for a miracle. And sure enough, it's a game-winning touchdown. Opposite the Knights will be NC State. The Wolfpack finished 7-5 overall, 3-5 in the ACC. They are led by quarterback Jacoby Brissett. The junior is thrown for 22 touchdowns and just five interceptions while adding nearly 500 yards on the ground. NC State's only game against the American this season was a 49-17 win at USF in September. Again, you can catch the game on December 26 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. The third team with a share of the conference championship, Cincinnati, will be heading to Annapolis for the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman on December 27th. 
For the Bearcats, it's been a year of overcoming adversity. Quarterback Munchie Legault suffered a season-ending, possibly career-ending leg injury last year, but was cleared to play at the beginning of the 2014 season. Gunnar Keel was named the starter and would start every game, but Keel battled an injury to his ribs all season long. Legault was ready to step up whenever head coach Tommy Tuberville called his name, making several big relief appearances. And then there was the tragic death of redshirt freshman running back Chimota Kennedy Palmore the week of the Ohio State game. The Bearcats end up falling to the Buckeyes, just one of the tough opponents on their non-conference schedule, but picked up a win and the victory bell against Miami of Ohio, and also a W against Toledo. Conference play started off on a low note with a loss at home to Memphis, but ever since then, the Bearcats have been winning. Seven consecutive games now with noteworthy wins against East Carolina and Houston. They are only one of eight teams in the country riding a seven-game winning streak. Cincinnati will face Virginia Tech. Out of the ACC, the Hokies finished 6-6 six six to become bowl eligible for the 22nd straight year. The Hokies rose to as high as number 17 in the polls and remain the only team to beat Big Ten champion Ohio State. Virginia Tech beat the Buckeyes in Columbus 35-21 in September. The following week, East Carolina came into Blacksburg and defeated the Hokies 28-21. On January 2nd, Houston will head down the road to the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl in Fort Worth, Texas. The Cougs had a disappointing start to their season with a loss to UTSA in the season opener at their brand new stadium. John O'Corn coming off an outstanding season last year. He struggled early on, so the team turned to Greg Ward Jr. Ever since, Ward has been the guy that has given a spark to this Houston team. On paper, the Cougars' 7-5 record doesn't completely tell their story of their season. Three of their losses, UCF, Tulane, and Cincinnati, were decided on a final goal line play. But Houston gave Memphis their only conference loss of the season, a 28-24 win on the road in Ward's first start at quarterback. Houston slowly found their identity throughout the course of the fall, and after the quarterback switch, they altered their style to the skill set of Ward. A dual threat, Ward proved he can get it done both in the air and on the ground. Kenneth Farrow emerged as one of the league's best running backs. Farrow finished the season fourth in rushing, including a league-leading six 100-yard rushing games. The Cougars will take on Pittsburgh. The Panthers, out of the ACC, became bowl eligible by winning their final two games over Syracuse and Miami for an overall record of 6-6. Six six. Pitt is led by a dynamic running game, ranking 16th nationally in rushing. Sophomore running back James Conner was named ACC Offensive player of the year. Again, this game can be seen January 2nd at noon Eastern time on ESPN. East Carolina will finish up the bowl season for the American in the Birmingham Bowl on January 3rd. It's been a whirlwind of a season for East Carolina, the Pirates gaining the most media attention of all the teams in the conference during the first half of the fall. It all started on the road with a big win against Virginia Tech and then continued against in-state rival North Carolina. Two ACC wins chalked up in the first month, putting the Pirates in the top 25. They stayed there for six weeks, reaching as high as number 18. A lot of the hype surrounding seniors Shane Carden and Justin Hardy blowing up on social media as Cardi. The quarterback wide receiver duo connected for nine touchdowns in 2014 and 27 in their careers, which is the most among active tandems. Hardy also became the FBS all-time leading receiver after passing Oklahoma's Ryan Broyles in the second to last game of the season. Pirate Nation hopeful to be the team to get into that New Year's Six Bowl, but there was still a lot of the season left to play. A bump in the road came on a rainy day in Philadelphia. Temple pulled off the big upset at home. Then things got worse when they headed to Cincinnati. A high-scoring back-and-forth game ended with a last-minute Cincinnati game-winning field goal. But there was still one more heartbreaker that came in the Pirates' last game of the season. A huge home matchup against UCF, the Knights needing a win for a share of the conference title, and Ruffin McNeil's Pirates trying to get a win for the seniors on senior night. 
A Justin Holman Hail Mary pass is going to hand the Pirates their fourth and final loss of the regular season. The Pirates will have a chance for redemption against Florida. The Gators finish 6-5 out of the SEC this year after finishing the season with a hard-fought loss to number 3 Florida State. The high point of the Gator season came when they defeated number 11 Georgia in November. Head coach Will Muschamp resigned following the season and will not coach in the bowl game. Again, this game can be seen on January 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen.